the world back again. It is Country Rap Report. Your boy, Big XL. What up, Mr. Deuce, mate? And y'all know what you're watching and what we do. We give y'all some of the best. We give y'all not some of the best. We give you our opinions, our views, our expertise on some of the best and worst videos in the genre of country rap. We also give you AMAs, Ask Me Anything. That's where you can ask us anything when it comes to the genre of country rap. We also give you guys exclusive artist interviews with some of the hottest movers and shakers in the genre of country rap. Now, today's episode, we're going to give you an exclusive interview, all right? Now, before we do, I want to say, y'all, please check out countryrapreport.com for all your country rap report needs. And I got a question to ask Spank before we bring our guest on. What's that? How long are we allowed to be your boy? I don't know. That's a... That's a weird question. I know. I like. I always say it's your boy, and I'm like, well, how long am I gonna be your boy? When will I ever be your man? Like, will I be 80 years old? I'm like, man, what's up, man? How about your boy? This is what, however long you comfortable with saying it. Do you have, do you say how about your boy? No, I've never said that though. In your life? Not not in any part of my career. No. So when you tell people how about you, what you say? How about me? How about me? That's it. Yeah, it I, like being, I don't like being called boy in no kind of way. So that, that's probably why I never said it. I never adopted that. But it's B-O-I, boy. How about your boy? I know, but it come out the wrong mouth. It sounds funny. Then I'm like, you know, fuck you call me. You know, that type of thing. And I got to ask this quick question. Can you give me a quick answer? What's going on with my Dodgers, man? What you talking about? I still got the second best record in... Uh, NL. We done. We have probably at the moment in time of us recording, we have probably lost six of the last ten. Oh, well, I think we just won eleven straight. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kershaw is coming off the IL, and Bueller is going on the IL. You rise. Our two aces are looking like the bottom two, and the two people we didn't expect, Gollison and Anderson, are winning. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Oh, our, ours has been done with it, the offense. Like, our offense is clicking on all cylinders right now, so it's a, it's a plus for us. And the Yankees are looking unstoppable. Oh, they'll, they'll, they'll hit a roadblock some. But we, hopefully, this is our roadblock. Um, yeah, because our pitching, what I knew was going to be our problem is our problem, the pitching. Pitching ain't horrible. Still got one of the best ERAs in all of the league. I just ain't clicking on all cylinders. You got an all-star team. Like it just it ain't time yet. They'll probably click all in July. As long as we in that in in the dance in October, I don't really care what our record is. I don't care. And that's I just, don't see nobody else in the division taking that from seven the Dodgers. games. No, nah, I don't think I can't see the Padres beating y'all. I can't see the Giants beating y'all. The Met, Diamond, Diamondbacks is trash. The Met, oh, Mets is for real now. Mets for real. Right. You know, they, they ain't we, no joke. So we'll we'll see. We but just y'all just split. beat the Mets. We split. No, we split two and two. Yeah, you won the first two uh, Mets. I, I, I actually picked the Mets to go to the World Series and win it at the beginning of the year. All right, we're going to see. We're going to see. For all our baseball enthusiasts, you know, Braves fan, Dodgers fan. Yeah. But I'm Braves second. Matter of fact, I'm going to get my ring. I'm going to collect my Braves ring in <laughs> September. That's what's up. Yeah. All right, y'all come holler at your boy. I'm going to go up there. They got the rings at the Stripers game in September. Oh, the I didn't know that. Ring. Yes, sir. Well, that did you I see? Really, you you should have got some tickets when Ronald was playing in Gwinnett. Then you could have got got up there early. I know, but I, I went ahead and bought. He was in and out so fast. Right. Went ahead, went ahead and but I have bought the tickets for the replica ring. Okay. Because okay. all those games sell out with the Braves. Right, they done so they done gave that that ring away like four different games. I know <laughs> oh, the big league level, big league level. But the whole I, I looked there first, they're all sold out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, People everybody want those replica that. rings. Without a doubt. They're probably on eBay right now for like 50 bucks. So I think the first 2,000 people to come to the Stripers game in September. Boy, get there early. I'm gonna get there early because I already got my tickets. Like five early. Yeah. Yeah, don't 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 fuck around with going that traffic either. You get up there early, bro. Leave at three. 
All right, so look, we got a guest, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a little baseball talk for y'all. We only talk about two teams, but it's okay. Yeah. We got a guest. We got a guest. Let me let me cue him in. Let me cue him in. And I'm not definitely going to get to the point because I think he think I don't like him. <laughs> I think he think I don't like him. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Country Rap Report, <laughs> Mr. Cowboy Killer. What's going on, my guy? Like How you, you doing, brother? Video. Doing good. Look, the first thing I the first thing I have to ask. Sure, is, sure. Is it Cowboy Killer or GFL Cowboy? It's it's Cowboy Killer. I used to go by GFL. Uh, it stands for Good for Life, which is this leap right here. So you know I'm country. I got poison ivy on me for my interview, dog. <laughs> so so we uh we went by Cowboy Killer about two years ago. I got a band. Um, it's been that's that's when it really started turning up. You know. Okay. Um. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Appreciate Welcome. you, man. I appreciate you. And we Fletch, was good, man. What's up, dude? We definitely appreciate you having your device turned the right way. We ain't got to do a turn like we do on I, I knew you were going to say, so I, I got it right. I got my pink little stand, my phone stand. Some girl gave it to me, so it's working perfect. Okay. All right, let's get into it, man. The first thing I ask everybody, where is Cowboy Killer from? Appalachia, Ohio, Southeast. So. My town is called Kim Bolton. It's about 20 minutes from a town called Cambridge, 740, Guernsey County Rays. So most of my life was spent there. I was in Ohio, though, so it's where my father was. And um, I ended up just being kind of thrown around everywhere by the time I was 17. So I lived in Florida, New Mexico, North Carolina, lived in Utah, and now I live in Nashville, Tennessee. So been a lot of places, man. Why so much traveling as a youngster? Well, I just – I knew that – that's where I need to be. Like when you're in the holler, you're deep, like in the woods, you don't have like creatives around you. You don't have people that even like play musician, like don't even really see musician as a career. So once I moved to other cities, I was able to meet creatives who produce work on Ableton logic, mix master. That's when I really started to develop the sound and, and meet more people. So that was the all the, the ultimate goal was live band. That was the only goal. It wasn't like country rap. It wasn't any genre. It was live band. Let's make music with really dope people. Okay. Um, at what age did you realize that you even had a talent that you wanted to be an artist? Because, you know, a lot of people want to play football, basketball, baseball. Like when did Well, you it was a different age when I thought I was talented than when I started. So I started at 14 rapping. I rapped over everything, man. I was a huge, like, 50 fan, M, Wayne, um, Big L, to Pun, to Pac, to Big. I was just, like, a huge hip-hop fan. So I was always just rapping. And then just like being a white boy rapper wasn't really going to cut it. You know, I wanted to have like a band with me, a DJ, mix a lot of music together. But it was always like country influences. So um, and I, I was in the neo soul scene for a while, too. So I made a lot of like electronic beats. I made like um, a lot of stuff with a guy named Kaylin Ellis, my brother to this day. So we were able to kind of tap into new markets as well and make beats for people. So I started out that way. All right. Did, did you. So you're doing the music. But when did you decide to take it serious and realize that I have a serious talent? Because I, I wanted to do music, but I didn't have the talent part. Sure. I just knew I wanted to be an artist when I was 14. I knew I wanted to make music. I knew I wanted to be like the guys that I looked up to, which a lot of times were hip hop artists um, or like rocks, blues singers, you know, just people that were like really, really amazing with stage presence. I wanted to be like those guys. And I knew that they had what seemed to me like uh, the perfect scenario for my lifestyle. So I, I, I didn't think of it like I'm chosen to, to make music. I think it's a privilege to do it. So I just thought if I'm, if I can keep doing it and keep making music with people, then, then that's awesome. And then it's just led to this point, you know, it's not like a, I, being an artist and being true in that, like that's a privilege, you know, there's a lot of weight that that carries, you know, so you can't just BS around with that. So what do you create with more now? You, you what was that? Ableton, I said, what do you create more with now? You mentioned Ableton Live, but what do you I'm in Logic. Now? I've been in Logic 10 years. Okay. Um, mix, master, most of my stuff. I will pass it off to um, somebody if I if I need another ear. You know how that is. You Sometimes you just got to trust another ear. Right. And um, I got three guys in my studio right now who all work Logic, play guitar. They're in there cooking some stuff. We just made a record before I hopped on here, man. So I, I'm really just like, trying to surround myself with more people who are in that lane of like, we write, we produce, we play, we do it all. If you want to make a song, we can make it right here in the shed. You know what I'm saying? So okay. that's okay. who I really rock with right now. Okay. Um, 
you say initially your moniker was GFL. Yeah, it stands for Good for Life, which is this this leaf right here, and it's it's a it's a movement. A lot of people, you know, I had two of my homegirls just tatted on them yesterday. Actually, um, it just really means positivity. It's a reminder for that, but it means till death. It's more of a loyalty um, slogan. We started when we were young kids out in the holler, and it lives to this day. We could couldn't be here without the people who knew about Good for Life and the brand we built, and that was really built in Florida with me and Kaylin. A lot of guys there who started that brand are still with me to this day. So I'm very grateful for that. That too. sounds like a cult. That's what that sounds like. It does. <laughs> it's good. It for really life. does. You know what it is? It's like when people see, like I had the, the merch, it just says good for life on it. So everyone asks like, what does that right. mean? Right, you know, like, right, what right. is that? But it, I tell people when they buy the merch, like someone's going to ask you what it means. You tell them what it means to you, but it really means till death to be good regardless of circumstance, you know? So, and, and where I come from, there's not like, a lot of positive uplift, you know, or like even attention to like community outreach or uplifting people. So if we can do that through music, then that's that's a good place to do it. So that's what's up. Is that a rodeo shirt you have on? Yeah, I got I got the PBR shirt on today. I actually thrifted this one. Some some girl pointed it out. It's like got a got a city on the back of it where the event was held, but I wasn't from her city, but she was apparently. So. Are you a fan of the rodeo? I am. I'm a huge fan of the rodeo. I was. I was a farm kid, man. I grew up with horses, cows, pigs, rabbits, chickens, pheasants, dogs, everything under the sun. And I was just always around agriculture. So when I uh, when I started like branching out was when I actually really found the Cowboy Killer brand. You know, when you're just deep in your home life, you're not really like thinking about being this big artist. You know, you're kind of just working at factories or just trying to like get out of high school, you know. So, yeah, it didn't end up just being like me combining country and hip hop obviously created this storm where I wanted to, to be able to show the duality in both sides and, and bring people together. Ultimately, I'm not trying to exclude anybody from this, you know, whatever you believe is like what you believe, but I believe what I believe. If you rock with that. That's dope. So. I just went to my very first rodeo last week. That's I noticed the shirt. Yeah. So there's the rodeo crowd. There's, um, the, the Southern country crowd, there's the red dirt crowd. I came up in the Southwest in New Mexico. When I moved to New Mexico from Florida, that's when it really started turning up. I became the cowboy killer. The brand itself was like, you know, it's like, I was always the cowboy killer. It was just a moniker, you know? Um, and people can take it however they take it. It's just a matter of, you know, the music itself needed a good representation of what it was, you know? Right. And so it, I couldn't just be an acronym rapper, yo, that's not how you're going to get your name out there, you know? So it was really a way to just stand out and, and the rodeo people pick up on it. Hip hop fans, when they first hear it, they're like, yo, somebody lit on firecrackers. We on the East side of Nashville, yo. Um, <laughs> we, we, we just wanted to have a brand that people could recognize and they do now. So it's fire. Do you consider yourself a country rapper? I do. On, the, I just don't, unquote, I don't, rapper. I consider myself. I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you a name that I, that I call the genre. It's called trap grass. All right, don't steal that. I'm trap you, grass, Chris. okay. Trap grass, because we're mixing the Appalachian bluegrass banjo that people used to think you had to run from, except the banjo's from Africa, so is it really that hillbilly? Right. Um, we have a, a sound and a people that we represent. You know, even if the people that make the music with me don't represent that culture, I do. So it's my responsibility to somewhat include them in this narrative that was along my musical journey. So. We use the banjo, we use the slide, we use all those things. But, you know, I'm breaking country music and I'm breaking hip hop. So, you know, it's either you have an open mind and you love it or, you know, we just, we have the people who rock with it. And that's, that's who, that's who I really stick by. So if, I, if I'm making like a genre, it's like, you can't really put it on Distro Kid or Spotify, which is why I rock with y'all trying to get a petition started to get a genre for us. So that's right. what I would put it under, I guess, you know, like I have records I would put that under, but I just make country records sometimes too. So it's like, that's just country you know just music has no rules it, at least it shouldn't in my opinion but that's just well it, opinion. it doesn't to the listener and fan but to the distributors and the dsps it it has a it has a classification that it needs to go up under so we we're trying to right. we're trying to blur that line but we're also trying to define that line if, you, if that makes any sense we want everybody exactly. that is over here to go up under it but we still want them to make the music that they want or that they feel is true to them you know country yeah and and as long as it's true, yeah. as long yeah. as people feel it, then that's what it is, you know? Agree. Vic sent me you know some why? stuff today that was not true. Like, it was some generic-ass country 
you right. hear that all the time. And, and I, the thing that I always stressed about the people putting snaps and 808s and modern hip hop drums and country music, don't just make it this knockoff country shit. Like black people need to make the music. You need to have people who actually have a hip hop background making it. And that's why a lot well, of- I, I, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that now. I, wouldn't, I say, I say have... it as like, you need to st- you need to know hip hop. Like you need to be a real fan of it. You can't just put snaps in there and then say that it's now it's urban music. Well, that's so that. wrong. Yes, that's you, so wrong. Yeah, right, you, right. you do have to have hip hop understanding to be yes, able to please, create it. Yes, please, I'll do that. For the yes. love of God. Yeah, yes, bro. Yes, yes. There, and that's why I rock with Upchurch because he's a real hip hop fan. That's why oh, I rock yeah. with these folks. You know what I'm saying? Like these hell people yeah. really grew up in an era, my era, I'm 25, yo. Okay. We grew up on hip hop and country. You can't really stop what we heard. You know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> right. just what we heard. Right. So, right. you know, right. us mixing it, that's, it's, it's time. It's pioneer shit for real. Absolutely. Now, when in mentioning church, you know, a lot of people think country rap and they think it's just a genre for for white guys or a white female. Church actually, his mouth says he feels like the genre needs more black. M- music should not have racial barriers ever. That is just wrong. I mean, if you you shouldn't be a white guy making Jamaican reggae music, probably because you're not from Jamaica. You're from South Carolina. All right, so make country South Carolina Myrtle Beach music. Don't make Jamaican music. But and I've seen that. That's why I mentioned it. I mentioned things that only I only know what I see. Right, I only know my truth. Right. So whatever I speak about over 808s is what I'm speaking about. It's got to be music from the heart from the soul. If it's even funny records, I'll tell you this much. Like I was influenced by Weird Al Yankovic because he made Amish Paradise. And that was funny to us. But it reached country kids. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like everyone has their role in music. But if you're not playing your role or know your role, then you're going to be stuck in that world of, oh, I know my sound, but I'm open minded. But nobody tells me what to do. Then it's like. All right, yo, you know, you're not a real artist. You're not, you're just like putting stuff on SoundCloud or you're just making stuff, you know? People like, um, like the guys I look up to are Charlie Crockett right now and Leon Bridges and Ernest, you know? Ernest goes from rap to country. It makes total sense, yo. Hip hop and country are so similar. These are similar stories of poverty and, and neglect and housing crises and families in ruin and jobless markets, wow. forgotten people these topics can be discussed over different sounds. And I think anyone who's like trying to stick to tradition, I respect them for that, you know, but we already have a Hank Williams. I think we need a couple more different kind of artists and, and uh, guys like Coffee Anderson. Um, that's, that's what we really need, you know? And as far as hip hop goes, just be hip hop, yo, understand it. Study hip hop, you know, don't be that person that doesn't know hip hop. Agree. You know what? You just said something that it never, I never, I never imagined it, but the stories are so similar when you talk about poverty and, and, yeah. and struggle and fatherlessness health issues, like country and hip hop are so close. And we that- divide each other all the time. And that's why I do what I do, because you see guys, with, you see cowpokes at my shows with hip hop fans, yo. I never. That's dope. That's what it's about. You know what I mean? Music's what? supposed to bring us together. So what? I'm just a firm believer that music's going to save us all. And it's not. But, you know. I used to always tell people, and people thought I was crazy. I said, if Christ came back, I felt like Christ would come back as a rapper. He would come back as Jelly Roll, yes. <laughs> yes, he would. Yes, he would. He would come back and, as and a that's, rapper. That's, and I, I mentioned Jelly Roll. Shout out to Jelly Roll. I'm not, a, I'm not afraid to name drop because I get flowers. You know, I'm not a hater. Um. Jelly Roll and Struggle, you know, those are the guys when I look at the Mount Rushmore, as you guys might say, of country rap, you know, like these guys really rock the minds of people who don't think that that's possible. man. And it's just a, a way of upbringing. And my generation has broke a lot of that. And I'm, I'm really happy for that. Well, because those we guys have, have no those guys have paved the way for your generation, the church for so, generation. For so many. Yeah, yeah for so, so many. many. Now and I think that, we've we, we've upped it and we've made it even better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because there's more hip hop fundamentals in the stuff today. But before it was more that don't take a don't don that type of stuff, and it was really heavy on that. But now it's more Her. rap first, country second. You know, before yeah. it was the other way around. It's all about hard melody, songwriting. You know, these things are still important. Okay. And if people know what they're doing, then. We shouldn't detour them from creating what their soul is telling them to create. Okay. And I don't care if that's some some kid in the suburbs who wants to make country 
or some kid in the hood who wants to make country or somebody from both sides of the spectrum trying to make hip hop. As long as they tell the truth, as long as they tell their truth, you know, I'm I'm a firm believer in don't interrupt the music, man. I was an engineer first, Fletch, you know, so I engineered people all throughout my career, hip hop primarily, okay. deep in that Florida scene when Ski Mask was coming up, X was coming up, you know, VR would come over to my house. These guys would rap and hang out all night and party. And that scene is what made the Cowboy Killer because I realized that music was meshing with punk. Rap was meshing with emo. That's what really created this. I was like, damn, I actually can be from my culture and be proud of it. You know, and that was the real defining moment for me. But I, well, it, 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 imagine being born 20 years earlier and then you having to do what Colt Ford is done or even jelly or struggle. Like they had to endure the time of white boys trying to rap like that wasn't really accepted. And the unknown to endure yeah. the unknown. Yeah. yeah. And I saw jelly. I met jelly seven years ago. I mean, I've been a fan since for a long time, you know. As soon as I started rapping, I heard about Jelly Roll through my brother Dustin, who uh, wrecked his four-wheeler out by my road in the holler and lived with me. And, and we bumped Jelly Roll and Struggle and, and Chip the Rip and Kid Cuddy. And we were Ohio boys. So right, right. Jelly was was right there. He Columbus, Ohio is his second home, practically. Um, I came up in an era where I saw Doobie Bandit come up and, and Caskey had to pave his way. I lived in Orlando, so right. I saw him pave away. And I looked up to these guys because – you know, I didn't want to be like them. I saw that they did it. Right. It was right, possible. Right, it was right. possible for me to be me too, you know? And that's the, the defining moment of any artist is when they see somebody else do it and they want to do it too. And those people paved the way for what we got now. And Upchurch will do the same and I will do the same. And, and many, many men and women have inspired by what we're doing right now. I people agree. will look down upon as... Um, you know, vulturing or just shaking up the melting pot too much. You know, we got to open our minds up, man. We really have to like be open to let creatives be creatives and let the ideas flow because the creators are the ones that come up with the ideas that kind of change the world. So Agreed. we can't, we can't shut it off. That's just how I always feel about it from an engineer's perspective too. You know, right. I'm there to, I'm there to help the artists. I'm there to get them their best performance, their best song yet. So I shouldn't uh, stunt that growth ever. Um, what does it what does it mean to you or what does it feel like being part of like that scene? Like you mentioned X, you mentioned uh ski mask, like being part of that sound, because that sound almost yeah. birthed a generation of kids it did. right now. Like it X did. music will live on forever. And like, he'll get a bad rap because of the, the mistakes he made, but he did try to make a change. Everyone will say that. I didn't know X personally. I've okay. seen him before, you know, in a but I've never met him personally. I knew his team. I knew I knew about his his story. Ski, Danny Towers, that Florida scene is what really created me. And I'm so glad you asked that, Vic, because that scene was creating this metal rock infused hard 808s. They didn't care what the mix sounded like, dude. They cared about the energy in the songs and it changed music. But yes, um, Josse was one of the most talented human beings that has has walked in the music industry and just change things forever. And, and a lot of people owe their careers to him probably. Um, but I, I just, I think that scene was a once in a lifetime thing. It'll never happen again. It'll never happen like it did then. All right, now I have a new found perspective for you as an artist in your music, mm -hmm. because I didn't know you mm -hmm. had that background. So like yeah. now it makes sense. Like when, when I watch a video of yours and I, Maybe the party aspect of it loses me a little bit, but now I'm like, okay, now I get it. Like, I didn't realize that your roots come from so many different areas. So now when I watch your videos yeah. or hear your music, now I see why I'm getting so many angles because there are, is a lot of you in Have there. a big palette, yeah, yes. and, and I embrace it, and I don't think it's a bad thing at all. No, it's um, not. Like on my first Cowboy Killer album, I start that intro – with a song called Get Up, my brother Tessellated is on it, and he makes a lot of Jamaican pop dance hall music, and he's on that record. That record gets placed with the Northern California Black Equestrians, and they ride and send out ballots on horseback to that song. That song is on the news everywhere. That's why I make music. Because now people are seeing it like, wow, 
these two folks come together, didn't see that coming. Oh, I didn't see, I didn't see, uh, you know, you, nobody saw what um, Little Nas X was going to do. Nobody saw what um, the real game changers, Yellow, Yellow Wolf, people really changed things because they weren't willing, that they were willing to open up and the people around them accepted them for who they were. I'm not a person who's ever going to, going to hate on anybody in the comment section or nothing like that, bro. I'm not going to rate people's bars. I'm not going to battle you. I make art. You know, we make music. We take care of that process. And it should be a sacred process. We used to be, it used to be so hard to make music, right? You guys, like the 80s, the 90s, it used to be kind of hard to make a record. Yeah, and yeah, it so, used to be hard to so make a record. Now, and now anybody can put <laughs> one out, right, Fletch? Right. Like, what, are we, what are we looking at? Like, we got to be able to um, put quality out but know that, yes, a hit is made in 15 minutes, man. I, I, uh, I was high as hell making 4 a.m. And the structure is, is all over the place. And I know that as an artist, but I don't change it because I love the song. You know, I love the moment. Why, why ruin a moment? Why right. take away from, hey, you know what? The hook's hard, you know? And, and these girls love it, you know? Or these moms love it. I know how to write good songs, too. And I, that, I was trained to do that. And um, in the trenches doing that in Florida. So I don't shy away from songwriting. I want people to like the music. Um, gotcha. It shouldn't just be um, fucked up, fucked up the whole song. Right, um, right. But if it's hard, then it's hard. And that's what I, I learned in Florida is if it's, if it's there, it's there. We're in there, we're running it, you on the mic or not. And it was the, it was the real grind to like get seasoned to become the artist I was hoping to be. So it was a good training ground, right? Definitely. The name Cowboy Killer. When I first seen the name Cowboy Killer, before I ever heard one sound, when I seen the name, the first thing went through my mind, and it's funny you mentioned Weird Al Yankovic. The first thing I thought was, is this going to be a guy who comes through and feels like he's here to destroy country rap? Like, tell me behind the, the science behind the name Cowboy Killer, because I didn't know what to expect. So if you know the history behind the Marlboro ads, the Marlboro Red ads, they call Marlboro Reds Cowboy Killers. I'm a, I'm a smoker to this day. I've got I'm trying not to smoke one right now. I'm trying to be classy, but um, <laughs> I, I'm sitting in the holler in the middle of Ohio in Appalachia. So I grew I grew up on a couple country stations, no hip hop stations. Any hip hop that I got was LimeWire, all that. And so I was mixing those genres all along. But the moniker came from my father died of lung cancer. And so he quit for 20 years, but still died of lung cancer and left me at three with my single mother. And so I realized that, like, I was carrying on this legacy of my father and there was a lot of pressure of that. You know, as a man, you kind of want to you want your father to be proud of you. Um, but then I took that moniker and, and flipped it as if, you know, I'm the cowboy killing myself. I'm not out here to I say I kill boys, you know, because I kill rappers. Like, that's just funny. You know, you kill rappers. Duh. You know, you got to be confident in the game. Right. But I'm the cowboy. I'm killing. You know, I'm killing ego. I'm killing the part of me that Cowboy Killer let me kind of talk about the evil in my life, you know, because Good for Life was a positive movement. We, we built a lot of great things. Cowboy Killer allowed me to be the person of the shadow. Right. The part of me that is alone or feels um, dark energy or dark thoughts that I need to get out there that I think people will hear and be saved by it. If it's a party song, it's a party song. You know, I love to turn up at my shows. I usually play the hits like 4 a.m., like Hopscotch, like At Large. I like to play those records. Um, but when we have that moment where I can play a record and it's it's deep and it's meaningful to them, that's what the Cowboy Killer really is. You know, it's it's I get to show that side of me that I never got to really show um, just writing for other people or engineering. Now I'm at the forefront of that. Bro, how do you create a party scene on the back of a pickup truck? Man, that's easy. You park it in the middle of a field. You just park trucks in the middle of a field, and then it's a party. <laughs> that, that's what we – you know what we used to do? We used to go in my hometown to the Walmart parking lot. All my stories are at Walmart, I swear. Just partying in the Walmart parking lot. That's some country stuff right there. But, I mean – and, and it, here's the other thing, too, man. Some people ain't really country, yo. Because I, I did everything I could to be in a hip-hop scene. I moved to different cities, everything. Because I was so damn country, I was around nobody. Nobody wanted to make music with me. I'm from a nowhere middle of the woods, log cabin, towns 20 minutes away. You know what I mean? So that, that's just a little bit of the background on that name. And, and it, it really comes from the, 
um, the duality of good for life, you know, um, be good, but, you know, don't get in my way either. I'm, I'm a force to be reckoned with for real. You touched on something I want to ask and you say you lost your father at age three. Yes, sir. Yeah. How did that affect the man you become 22 years later? I had a revelation about that. And that's when I became the cowboy killer. I was 21 and I took a DMT trip and I realized I was a better man today because my father didn't necessarily raise me. He wasn't there to raise me. So I'm more of a, a copy of my father than I ever could have been because he didn't raise me. He didn't tell me what to be. He didn't tell me, go do this. I didn't have to look to him to make him proud. I had to look up to make it proud, you know? So it was more of a, I need to figure this out on my own. And it's the reason I'm, a, I'm an artist today, for sure. I think the trauma of um, losing a father has made a lot of rappers artists, you know? And it's just that, that drive to discover your own sense of being a man and how to navigate the world and um, a reflection of the things I've seen in my life. Like maybe other people are going through this too. So um, hopefully that helps too. Right. But it's more or less um, the name. The name is from the holler. It's from the country. It's from my town. And I and I give them the the, the respect and, and the, the really the they're the reason I'm the cowboy killer. You know, if you don't come from the holler, you can't be the cowboy killer. Right. Then it seems like you're anti-country or whatever. But not at all. Country music raised me. My mother raised me on Brooks and Dunn, Alan Jackson, the Dixie Chicks, all the greats. So. How often do you get an opportunity to perform live, especially in Nashville? Um, whenever, whenever I feel it's necessary. We did a show last night, actually. I was playing the spoons at somebody's house, just in someone's backyard. Super cool vibe. I was playing with another band, actually. Spoons? And, um, yeah, I, I, I play the spoons. Yeah, so I just beat on some spoons oh, up there, and the girls love it. Even before I play, go. they're like, we love you. We're like, yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and I go up there and beat the crap out of them and, and get drunk, but my show, um, I have a headliner show in five days in New Mexico at the launch pad, you know, like a second home to me. And, wow. and New Mexico, I'm excited to see him, man. I can't wait. It's the Welcome Home Cowboy Show. So shows like that, I get the guys together and, and we rock out, man. And it's a lot of fun. It's, it's the greatest privilege I've ever had in life. And I never thought that I would be the rock star center stage. I was the guy in the seat recording people, writing for people. But I had a good idea and it worked. So I'm really happy. So... You play the spoons? Yeah, I'm not I'm not no good at it. If you look up the spoon lady on YouTube, dude, she's good at it. But I do play the spoons. Yeah, I, I um I broke my wooden spoon yesterday. So I had to uh, so I literally went in the dude's kitchen and I washed two spoons and, and played them for a show. All right, so look, man, because I only have one musical talent. <laughs> oh wait, no, this one now. But you say you play the spoons. Make me think I might have a shot because I ham bone. Right. Yeah. Oh no. You know he, what ham bone it is? He, 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 he the ham bone now. Yeah. You play the thing. You play that thing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I can't hear it too well. You gotta you put the mic up to it. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying though, like I'll get if, you mic'd up. I'll get if, you mic'd up. If you need put him in a video. If you, if you ever need me in a video or on stage. I got you, Vic. Vic, you want to come on stage with me one time? Play that thing. I got you, bro. Straight up. Man, I can imagine the groupies I can get ham boning. Oh, don't, don't for real. That. And don't if you had that. a cowboy hat on too, man. Oh, I, I got like cowboy hats in all colors. Talk to me. Talk to red, me. Red, blue, green. I'm a holiday cowboy hat wearer. Red, white, and What's blue for for like Labor Day, Memorial Day, and the Fourth of July. Like you got it all. Yeah, yeah. You need it. See, I, I got a couple of them, a couple trusty ones, you know. I've sweated in them. They're good. They, they fit me good. I, I stick I stick to it. Well, you probably, you probably got expensive cowboy hats. I, have... I got a Stetson. Stetson, yeah. You need a Stetson. No, I, I tell got anyone, a you know, oh, I want. You know, I, I say, you're right. you need, if you got a lot of money, you go get a Stetson. That's what I say. So, yeah, so I, got I can't a, play. A, aside from them spoons, what else do you play? I play bass. Um, okay. I, I – um, I play bass for a lot of hip hop guys too. And um, I usually don't play instruments live because I'm so focused on vocals. Okay. You know, I'm not, um, I'm still playing acoustic. Um, 
I've written a couple songs recently on acoustic, but I don't play it live. I like to just stick to having my band play their role and then I can just breathe. I need to right. focus on breathing. I'm a smoker. Okay. So we have a lot of fun, man. Saxophone, horns, bass, electric, DJ, uh, keys. It's the full experience, man. It's it's Wild West Church out there. What you got no an church in the wild. You got an eight piece band? But basically, well, I've had 11 people on stage. That's the most people I've had on stage. Holy shit. Yeah, That's man. So I've had background singers. Yeah, dude. Right. We do it. We do it. And up. New Mexico shows out. Shout out to New Mexico. Anyone from New Mexico watches this, can't say I didn't shout you out. I love y'all for real. You have a DJ? Um, we get slept on them. DJ, yep. I got uh, my homies DJ in this, this Friday. So we got Friday headliner right before Juneteenth, dude, right downtown. I mean, we, we got a lot of things that, that are going to happen in music this week. I was at CMA Fest all week. I don't know. Where, where are you guys located at? Are you in Mass or? We're in Georgia. Yeah. Georgia. Yeah. Georgia. Yeah, no, CMA Fest, well, it was traffic. And I was there every day getting baked and drinking boosh lot um, and having a good time, man. So it's, it's another good week of music this week. So we're going to keep the momentum going for sure. Bro, I got to say this. Next show, you if you have a show in, with some time in Nashville, please let me know because I realize I will, that Nashville is not that far of a drive. Right. Not at all. And um, because we um we came up for the church show, and um, I'm like, man, yeah, I'm definitely definitely will come to Nashville. And I know Jelly's doing the Bridgestone. I'm trying to find a way in there. I gotta find a way in there. Yeah, anytime I got a show, I'm a, I'm a send, I'm gonna send y'all flyers, updates, every video. Y'all know I'll spam you. You know, um, that's that's I'm just trying to get the name out there still. You know, so when we do a show here, I'll um I'll send you all the info, man, for real. And I'm six hours from my hauler. It's it's close, y'all. Like we're close. Nashville's a, uh, an easy drive. So if I mail you a spoon, <laughs> a set of spoons, will you autograph them and mail them back to me? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Would love to. And you can go to a music shop and get like spoons that are like already made. They're kind of like, you know, they've already like welded them together. And so you can uh, you can play them yourself. And so if you want to get into it, that's how you do it. dude. It's already ready. It's a little rig, you know. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun. It's real. It's real hillbilly stuff. I play washboard on stage. I've, uh, yeah, man. Yeah. So I do real like backwoods, old time and kind of stuff with a band called Doug and the Dine. I live with my banjo player, uh, banjo bonzo. So we we're always cooking, man. Always making something. Trap grass. They gonna take that one. No, they gonna take that one. You need that on a shirt. Um, yeah. I'm gonna make the brand, dude. Yeah. Like trap yeah. grass merch line. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. trap yeah. grass, yeah. like weed yeah. influences, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, like all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm on it. You heard it here first, y'all. So that's dope. Last thing I'm gonna ask. Um, you released a project in March. Long live yes. cowboy. Uh, what has been the response to it? What went into making it? The response has been amazing, man. We're about to hit 100,000 streams, which is unheard of. I, I was I posted last month that I had more monthly listeners on my Spotify than in my, my hometown, than people in my hometown. So the response has been amazing. The album, it took so many people, man. Um, is, is I'll, I'll do some shout outs if that's cool. Scalco Music, my brother Kaylin Ellis, Current Music. Um, guys like, um, we, we had a, a, a guy who was doing pop music with me, making a lot of fusion stuff. So there were people on there when you guys pointed out the pop influences, that's yeah. what you're hearing. You're hearing, I'm in the room with guys who are real Orlando pop singers, or I'm in a room in Rio Grande studios. We're making red dirt country. And I'm around guys who really know that sound. The album, man, I'm I'm so excited to play it live, to give people that experience. Everyone who's like streamed the album, thank you so much. I know there's people from your channel who have come from here to my page. Thank y'all so much. And I'm just really excited to put out more stuff. This summer is going to be more projects. I'm going to stay on their heads, you know, like I can't, I got to stay consistent. I'm not going to going to let up or hold on to music any longer. I've got a lot of records in the stash, so all kinds of stuff. A lot of trap grass coming up. Frank, you got anything before we let my guy go? Yeah, what is that recording process like? Because it's got to be a little puzzling with all of you creatives in there. Does one yeah, of y'all come up show, with a concept? You to show you? Yeah, I can show you. Because I hear somebody thumping back there, but I ain't want to disturb them while they were playing. Oh, no. Here, I'll show you. So, we'll get an exclusive. Smile, recording. smile. You're on camera. <laughs> you really just come in. Brian, all say what up. 
cut your rap for it. What's up, y'all? Okay, so we'll come in here. Someone's working on logic. Right. An idea starts on guitar. I'll start freestyling something, right? Right. Anything comes off the head. Let's get it down. Let's lay it. Let's get that initial idea. Even if it's just a demo, we can come back to it. But a lot of times, the greatest songs are made right there. And they're made Agreed. 15 minutes. Or we just made a song earlier. It's so country. It's so real. It's about my mama. And um, it's strictly like in a stage of, okay, we recorded it. Now we got to get to... Um, Brian's studio or or L studio record a better guitar get the pedal steel down that's how I make music I don't okay. just download off YouTube and I will because I work with Jake Angel um shout out to Jake fire he's in Britain you guys have heard Jake Angel Beast for sure and you'll hear more on the channel he works with Chase um but it's like that process is is a sacred process you have to get people in the room create stuff but I will cook over Zoom I'll cook over FaceTime Anywhere I can get good people, good idea together and, and catch a vibe. That's that's how it really happens. But I like to do it in person because so I can do use, it. All you use what you're doing there as like the demo and then you would take that and improve on it. Not all the time. Not all the time. The finals like there's going to be some final records that came out of this room. And OK, and it is what it is. You know, right. like a lot of the hip hop stuff is very easy. You can record it in a hotel room. Okay. But when you're coming to live instruments, you need to get amps mic'd up. That's. And you need a, a treated room for that. So my room is treated enough. I might bring it to a, a bigger studio if I need the project. But truthfully, we do it all in house, man. It's not like, a, you know, where we need the most high tech stuff ever. Just takes a laptop and a, and a good idea and some good music. You know, right. people who really know music. So what do, you about it too. What, what do you prefer when you're making your country rap stuff? You prefer 808s and drum kits or you prefer the live drum kits? Yeah, if I'm doing trap grass, I want, I want a banjo. That's the first thing I think. The first thing I'm thinking is, where's my banjo? And where's right. my pedal steel? Okay. Right? So then we're going acoustic, electrics in the room. We got to have all that. I might throw the spoons, shakers. I might shake it up. Okay. Um, but it's really about who's the producer, what is their skill set, and what do they do best? And if it's usually, I mean, everyone I've worked with up in, to this point in Nashville has been very diverse. They like to make blues and bluegrass and rock and country and R&B. We just like to mix it all. So whatever that vibe is, we catch it. I'm usually the person who goes, wait, 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 that. You okay. Know, that's, that's the person you need in the room. That's, I, I look up to the Rick Rubens now. You know, right. I don't look up to rappers. I right. look up to Rick Rubin. I look up to uh, the Kanye's even. The people who really orchestrate records. Right. And they make that process happen. They're, they're not afraid to say, that's the thing. Okay, let's run that. Do you see yourself executive producing more projects? Uh, versus yeah. being in front of the, 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 the mic and the camera you want to work yeah, more behind I, I wanna, scenes or more but i want to live my my life being young beautiful finding a way to reach my tribe and my people go on tour see lights camera action i don't want fame i don't want a bunch of money i want real people around me i want real music to happen and then down the road i hope that um, we could reap the benefits of helping other artists do the same so uh, to executive produce to to be the person who knows how to not only run that board, but run the back end. Right. And that's, that's my goal. I want to find that kid. I want to find the next Ryan Upchurch, right? I want to find the next person that is just truly amazing. But, but right now I'm so focused on being a cowboy killer. I want to, I want to create music that people love and write songs for other people as well. I love writing for female country singers, any country singers out there that want to write with me be awesome. And it's, it's, truly the biggest blessing in the world to write music for people man. for people to trust you with your art and your vision and all that i mean it's it's a and, real and vice real versa high. and vice versa because you have to trust them to pursue vice whatever versa. you wrote you vice know, versa i'm in the room yeah i was yeah. in the room with two guys earlier that i like i trust them they're good people yep i can make music with you guys and that's what it's about and that that'll take you much further than chasing clout or chasing people with blue checks man Make well, what you make and make it true. Yeah, make your mama that's, proud. That's, that's it. ninety percent of the rappers you just dissed right there because that's what they chase. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you know, if, if, if you and hurt, cloud. it's probably about you. If they hurt, <laughs> it's probably about them. <laughs> if you hit, motherfucker, feel it. If it don't <laughs> yeah. apply, let it fly. <laughs> yeah. If it don't apply, let it fly. Yeah. Yeah. Don't apply. Well, Cowboy Killer, it's been an honor and a pleasure to Man. have you on the show. Um, same to y'all. Same to y'all. Thank you so much. Vic, we want to come to the show. We want. We want to come to. I, I want to see yeah. this live band experience. I. I have to see that. 
and I want to bring it to y'all, man. I, I have, um, I have some things that I'm planning. So let me, and I'm going to put out a project too. So I got a single drop in, um, how about a drink? It, it ain't no rap stuff. I, I'm dropping some country stuff. So give me a break on that one. But we're going <laughs> to definitely have some stuff coming out. Um, July 1st, be ready for a record I got coming called Killer Instinct. I'll drop, I'll drop that for the people right here now. Two weeks, Killer Instinct's coming out. It's going to be a hard one. Well, how and about I'm working, a, I want to make a suggestion. I, yeah. There isn't a lot of live performance records being dropped. Uh, maybe you can experiment with an EP or just doing a live set of some original stuff, but put it out there so people can hear the instrumentation because people that be really, crazy? really do love that. Or, or maybe I put the hip hop album out and then I do that live. live hell band. yes, Ooh. hell yes, hell yes. Because I'm making a lot of different stuff, dude. Like lot this this record I'm coming out with Friday, you'll hear it. It's like, oh, this is super campfire country live. Everyone's in the room together. Okay. Um, but if I drop the rap stuff and then I do a live version of that, yeah. That's yes. how you get them to change their mind. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. And I appreciate y'all. Fletch, you've been rocking with me. Yo. I appreciate it, Vic. I, I'm glad we could talk, man. I, it's, it's good to really to, to talk with you. And, you know, I appreciate all the critique, man, for real. You know, I know that this music is changing people's lives. And a lot of people are um, really inspired by what I'm doing. And I'm inspired just as much that they're inspired. So I appreciate y'all having, having me on and giving me the platform to do that. Before you go, what is your definition of country rap? I think country rap has to have elements of country and hip hop. All right. Now, if you're not rapping, then it's not country rap. What is rapping? Well, I think rap can have melody. So there can be singing and rap involved. I think there's a lot of there's gray areas, man, of where this is still rap. But, you know, if you want to go to 90s boom bap, we have Nas for that. Like, go go listen to that stuff. But when it comes to country rap, I want to hear elements of country, banjo, pedal steel, um, anything from, you know, the the elements of what we call country, modern country, traditional, right? Americana. Then I want to hear 808s, traps, snares. That's what I want to hear. Okay. And if you don't, if you do it all live, even if it's all live, but you're spitting bar after bar after bar, if you're using um, double time. You're connecting syllables in a hip hop kind of formatting, you could right. say. Right. Then let's call it that. But let's not look at um, Little Dirk as a country rapper because he did a country inspired thing with Morgan Wallen, you know. Right, right. That's, it's just, we have to define what real hip hop and country are. And if they're together, then I think we can find some sort of middle ground of, well, does this person at least have bars or not? And that's what it should be always just judged on. Are they good or not? Um, not even the judgment of if it's rap or not anymore, because we just blurred that line too much. They, they got to rhyme, though. They, got, they have to spit. They have to have <laughs> flow most of the time. Right. I mean, right. you know, just, yeah, don't don't just be a don't be a person who is calling themselves a rapper just because you have a trap beat, you know, you have to have elements of hip hop writing and style. There's, there's an actual way to rap. It's yes. not like, yes. you know, there's, there's, you can have your own shot your own style, but please like find a way to, to study hip hop and know it before you just go into it. When you asked what I played, I played bass for Lupe Fiasco. You know, that was where I really got my first credit. Okay that was a moment where I realized one of my hip hop idols I work with and I belong here too. You know, I, I'm not an outsider. I'll always be looked at that way. Right. But I'm not an outsider to this. I, I love this game and I'll continue to do it whether I make money or not. So let me find out you played bass on kick push. <laughs> now kick push. Listen to the house EP by Lupe Fiasco. Okay. Virgil's on that. I work with Virgil. I can't fail, man. Straight up. Last so question. It's a, and we've yeah. never asked this question. And maybe after you, we might not ever ask it again. <laughs> All right, perfect. Shoot At me. this point, have you, especially being in Nashville, have you ran across any country rap artists that we need to keep an eye out for? Yeah, uh, I just I just talked to Ryan Charles yesterday, Jiggy Buckaroo. Uh, Ryan, Ryan Charles talk. been on national television, <laughs> and 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 I'm sure he could bring you some subscribers. You know, so 
He, he's he's fire. I saw no, him. No, no, he's no. Fire. He had the pedal steel up there. He's fire, man. No, no, no. So no, no. We've already covered Ryan Charles. No, no. Oh, what, yeah. I, what I mean you know, is. Uh, Jesse, you got Jesse, right? Jesse Boyles? Yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. I got to so, get one with her, dude. She's so fire. And her voice, her singing voice. Come on, bro. She's so talented. No, yeah. what I mean is someone who is trying to find their way that maybe we haven't covered. Like somebody in the trench trenches. Somebody who's trenches. Rocking. Who? Yeah. There's a guy named uh, Foundations Mecca. I would check him out. I met him in Nashville. He's dope, bro. Foundations Mecca. He's come by the crib before. So he has like a country style background, but he makes a lot of hip hop stuff, just traditional. Um, I would rock with him for sure. You're writing it down. Um, yeah. But um, can I think for a second? Let me think. Yeah, well, while you're thinking, and I'll give you another question while you're yeah, thinking sure. about it. What, what is the hip hop scene like in Nashville? It's dope. I'm- it's dope. There's dope rappers here. Um, I think like um, the country scene is obviously trying like like swallows up most of the attention. But right, right. Nah, bro. There's there's hip hop here. Like like I'm on the east side of Nashville, bro. I'm where like the it got gentrified and like you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like this used to be like a different side of Nashville. Right. And so I see like the remnants of um, what used to be and what is now. And I think the hip hop community and the R and B community can actually revive Nashville. I think that's what will actually revive Nashville. Um, if you're so if you're so fed up that country music's changing, then why don't you go listen to rhythm and blues? You know, because there's soul in that too, and there's that's where country comes from. But there you know? there isn't any speaking of national hip hop from Nashville like uh, lately in 2022. Hell, in 20 in the 20s, it's been a long time since we've heard of an artist to come it out. It just of gets so overshadowed. Hip-hop. You hear that train? That's that East Side train. <laughs> um, it's so overshadowed, man. So. Yeah. But I'll tell you this much. Um, I I rock with a lot of rappers in New Mexico. You know, if you're willing to just cover some other people. Bro, I didn't uh, know rappers were in New Mexico. I've never heard not one to come out of this spot. For, for yeah, sure. exactly. Exactly. And, and, it, and it's, it's crazy how many places are slept on, especially right. Nashville. I mean, I know there's rappers from Nashville, bro. Like anyone from Nashville who's a rapper, drop a car, man. Get on the show. Like right. uh, any, any country rappers, there's just not a lot of people who do it like I do it. But straight up. Gotcha. And I, I, I know that I studied this game and and I'm going to leave a legacy. You know, that's that's all I'm after. I'm not after the fame and the glory. It's after the after a legacy. Well, a lot of the, a lot of people aren't musicians either. Like You guys are even your whole collective. You guys are, are true creatives. Like yeah. most rappers are just rappers. They just put bars. You know, they come in and they punch and they leave. And I push them to, to be something bigger. I tell rappers all the time. I tell emo rappers. I say, you guys should have a band. You're making emo rap music. You should have a guitarist. Right. Uh, like, what are you doing? So when it comes to country rap, you want to make country rap, get a get a band together and rap whatever you want, but get a band together and have some country influence in that and some twang and, and give people something that they deserve when it comes to these two genres being taken very, very seriously in, independently and together collaboratively. It should be respected in the same in the same vein. And I appreciate you guys covering it because you have hip hop backgrounds and you see that this this is a space that needs to to be covered, and uh, I'm glad you guys opened it up, capitalized, and, and and are shedding light in the genre. We need it for sure. We need it bad. Um, I'm name dropping you to Foundation Mecca. I just sent him a message. Yeah, man. Yeah, you tell him Cow- Cowboy sent. I, I mean, I I rock with him, and he he gives me that country vibe. And when we talked, he told me that you know that that's why he rocked with me too. And, and uh, we was barbecuing big turkey legs over my fire just the other day. Threw some Budweiser on there. We had a good time, man. He's he's a dope dude. So I, I'd love if you showed him some love. You guys have your own label, you and your group? It's just me. Just I you? signed me. Just me. Yeah, I don't, okay. don't want to sign anybody right now. I'm not in that game. So. Oh, we lost him. All right, we lost him, um, but that's probably, a, <laughs> that's probably a good point. Um, <laughs> he dropped. He he dropped somebody. Yeah, really he, like, oh! his, his phone was like, no, not no. Not no, no. <laughs> um, you know what, bro? That shocked me. Uh, what his musicianship? His musicianship, his hip hip hop background. Um, and this, I'm not I, shocked. I'm not shocked. I didn't. I heard it in the production. I heard it in the production in the last record that we covered. I was like, nah, this is this ain't no average white boy right here. He's he's got some history. I don't know where it came from, 
or who was he was he was in a room with, but somebody can play. And that ain't that ain't normal. That's not your that's not somebody that just grabs a two track and hey, let me spit over this. That's that's typical. And actually <laughs> now, like, and I think I've said on one of the reviews of one of the records, I felt an emo-ish vibe. Right, right, right. That whole Florida influence, now it makes sense. It makes I've never, sense. I've never. I, I can't. I've never given Florida any credit other than making booty shake. Yeah, see, there's been a whole wave like um, Ski Master, Slump God, X, um, Denzel Curry. There's a lot that's been going on in Florida. Oh no, then I, I, I owe Florida an apology because this y'all outside of booty shake. I didn't see where they gave any valid contributions to hip hop and Flo Rida. That was it. I mean, I'm being dead ass serious. I never, I never really, that never was really. Why would you just say it? Number one, you just skipped over Pitbull. Yeah, well, Pitbull's more Latino based. I can't give them to us. You just skipped over the city girls. That's. I thought that was Atlanta. No, man. I oh, see again. I, I apologize. I'm. I'm. I guess I was naive to a lot of that stuff. I. I I'm. I'm really mad because. You know what? I did, I, it was on me. I know it's on me because I never really gave Florida that due because I feel like Booty Shake never got his due. Booty Shake has never been considered a valid subgenre. It's never been given. It's never given its just due its valid contribution to hip hop. But without Booty Shake, we would not have had Atlanta music. Without without the shit that was happening with Two Loud Crew and all the other Magic Mike and all of them, we would not have had any music come out of Atlanta. It would have come out of some other city. So uh, look, but, that's funny that you say that. Uh, you know, I do this thing called talking shit. Right, right. Guys, talk shit show. <laughs> right, talking shit. <laughs> and we're having a we're having a coming up show. The difference in booty shake and a loud bass. Well, one influenced the other. I mean, Shadi came in and started it for Atlanta. He was probably one of the first one or two or three to do it out of Atlanta. But his influence still came from Miami baseball, Miami booty shake, or whatever we're gonna call it. Were it not for that, Atlanta wouldn't have wouldn't have been where it was. So I, I don't know. That's a that's a different show. I want to check in that, check that show. Make sure you send me that link whenever y'all do that. Um Cowboy Killer, you know, he's back up there, but you wanna bring him back or you wanna rap? Um, we probably need to wrap up. Just hit him a text that we're gonna unless he got something to say, but if he if he can just Jump in because we gotta really wrap this up because we're going on six. We're gonna wrap. We, I ain't gonna. Okay. We're gonna wrap, bro. I, when you see this, when this goes live, this is no disrespect. Thank you for coming on the show, bro. I know you didn't get your just doing closing out. Thank you very much. I appreciate your talent and everything that you guys are doing over there. It, it is much appreciated. And please, please let let us know because, bro, I ain't gonna lie. Now that I realize how close Nashville is, that Nashville trip. Me and the wife made that. I'm talking about we left after she got off work like right. at three. And we're right. in Nashville by seven. But no, don't forget you lose you lost the hour now. But yes, yes, you did. No, but yeah. that's cool. That, that I actually the hour helped. Right, right. And and we were willing to come back home that night. We got a hotel, mm-hmm. but we were willing to drive. I was willing to drive back home because I'm used to that. You know, oh, yeah. after the right. show drive, right? right. Like, Don't you better not drive back home. I better not wake up at home. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? She go even if she wake up safe at home, she's gonna fuss. So we got a room, um, and that was probably an hour outside of Nashville. Gotcha. So I'm definitely any country rap artist out there. Hey man, hit the country rap report up. I will vibe out in Nashville. It's, That's a it, show. We can do that, and we can do a show on it, and we can just. Our performance because we haven't done that yet. Yeah, so hey, Nashville is close. All right, um, Cowboy Killer, that was really, really dope. I was shocked. I was shocked at that music knowledge. I didn't expect him to name those rappers he named. I did not expect that. Well, him him naming any rappers out of Florida was a blessing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, countryrapreport.com. Please go there for all your country rap needs. There's no need for us to beat it in your head every week. You know what to do. Right now, we're going to sign out. Drop your hundreds for Heather for always, always, always putting this thing together like a thousand-piece jigsaw puzzle. Yes. And making it look so clear. 
drop the hundreds for her. Join the gang, gang, and um, we're gonna keep it moving. Man. This is boy Big Tell. It should do the thing. Until next time, man. Peace. Peace, y'all.